Welcome to the University of San Carlo. You just read our vision and there you can read about the entrepreneurial uh, spirit at this uh, university. The University uh, of St. Gallen is a specialized university with a focus on management, economics, law and uh, social sciences. But you won't find only academic programs and professors here. You will also find uh, fellow students. And I would say something uh, that we are really proud of is uh, the special uh, effort that students put into uh, student life. We have more than 150 students, associations, and uh, their interests range uh, from the investment club to the cigar club. We believe uh, that students and professors from different academic uh, disciplines uh, should be able uh, to talk together. And uh, this is why we uh, try to maintain a common level of uh, communication. We even founded a new school of computer science. And uh, this fall, we will have the first cohort of master students in uh, computer science. These students uh, will get a technical degree, but at the same time, uh, it was very important for us uh, that there is also an entrepreneurial uh, dimension uh, to these uh, computer science uh, studies. And uh, even if you won't uh, choose computer science, I think it will be important um, for you to talk to these techies who are really experts in uh, digitalization. An important uh, aspect that holds all our master programs uh, together is the uh, contextual studies uh, program. I myself uh, teach Russian and East European studies in this uh, contextual studies, uh, and you will be able to, to choose from a variety of uh, humanities and social science uh, disciplines. Uh, the purpose of these uh, contextual studies is to embed and uh, to reflect topics and problems uh, from your core programs. A final point uh, that I would like uh, to highlight is our new learning center. If you choose uh, to come here uh, to the University of St. Gallen, um, this learning center will be already functional. Now uh, we're finishing uh, all the uh, furnitures and, and uh, there are uh, final construction works uh, going on. Uh, the purpose of this learning center is uh, to give uh, a new experience of academic teaching and learning to the whole academic uh, community. So the only thing you won't find in the learning center is a professor just lecturing his or her students. Of course, um, we will also try to um, embed our lessons from uh, the COVID experience. We wanna keep the best and cancel the worst uh, from the COVID experience. And we still uh, believe that the university is a place where people can meet, where professors and students engage in discussions. And this is what we call academic learning. We're grateful uh, for the interest that you take in our university and uh, we wish you a very rewarding Master's Open Day. Hi, my name is Pascal Litten, and I will give you an introduction of our degree course structure and also give you some information about our student life and also, of course, what, is the, what studies at the University of St. Gallen costs you. Um, first of all, my person, I'm a longtime fellow of the University of St. Gallen. I've done my master's degree at this university and also my doctor, doctor's degree. 
and I've been working for St. Gallen for the university for quite some time. I have the role of uh, director of studies, um, which is uh, the role where, or the unit where all the student processes are handled from admissions to studies to graduation. And I'm also deputy of studies, and that's the role where special cases, special students' cases are administered. Well, we are not here to talk about uh, me and my person, but I will also tell you uh, about the uh, degree structure. And first of all, some technical issues. Um, if you have any questions, um, we have a so-called chat function available to you. So if you have any questions, you might ask them right away and they will be answered later on to you. And if you have some very particular questions on admissions, um, there is a better if you use the admissions email address. That's admissions at unisg.unisg.ch. So uh, what we are talking about, well, I'm going to give you an overview on the master's level. Um, then I'm going to tell you about the student life. Um, um, then uh, we are also talking about the international exchange career services and career opportunities. And of course, at the end, um, we'll give you some information on how to enroll and how to apply to our university. I'm not going to talk to you all alone. We have uh, several folks who are uh, with us um, um, with this presentation. Um, we'll have uh, Carolyn, who will be talking about the Learning Center. Then Daria will answer student questions. And Helga will give you an overview on the admissions and uh, application process. So I'm going to talk, tell you about uh, the degree course structure. Here you see a chart of a chart of all of our degree course structure. And if you can um, very easily uh, see, um, the structure is from the first semester until the ninth or tenth semester. So it goes through the all, of our, all of our bachelor's level through to our master's level. And it consists of so-called core studies and contextual studies. Core studies are courses which uh, give you the basics of any kind of discipline, whether it be, for example, banking, strategy, international management, or economics. And with contextual studies, um, there we apply a so-called multidisciplinary approach where you get to know other disciplines we have, which have a relation to the core studies or the core subjects. Um, the, the degree structures also differentiate between so-called uh, context studies and um, independent studies. Context studies are done in person with, uh, with a present, with a live audience in present, and independent studies are done through technical means and medias. And it's also the so-called self-centered learning, which is applied in independent studies. As you can see on this chart, we do have compulsory subjects. Those are subjects that uh, each student in a program, in a master's program, needs to take. Then you have so-called correlectives. Those are courses uh, where you can choose from a bunch of offer courses. And then we have the so-called um, independent electives, uh, where you can choose from all other disciplines. As you also can see, um, in bachelor's level, at the bachelor's level, and at the master's level, master's level, you need to write a master thesis. But we'll get to that later on. So um, the um, approach that we have is a called is a so-called integrated approach, um, and it means that we are focusing on a multidisciplinary view, which is, as I pointed out uh, before, that is pointed out with the contextual studies. And it's also pointed out with our, of our vision and this uh, integrated uh, approach is direct, directly derived from our vision. And it says our students should be conscious of their role in, um, and learn to assume a long-term risk of responsibility for society. This is a very important aspect in our study program and our methodology. So what kind of programs do we offer? And you will have the chance in the afternoon to uh, get at least two programs to get to know, to know them in more detail. And this is a list of all the master's programs that we are offering. You see um, on the right uh, side of the chart, you see that some of the, those programs are offered in German only and others are offered in English only. 
which is, I think, is uh, self-explaining. Then we do have uh, programs which are offered in both languages. So it doesn't make any difference if you are German or English speaking student, you may um, complete the whole program either in German or in English. And then we do have two programs which are called hybrid um, programs. There you need to take a certain amount of courses in English and another amount of courses in German. So in those kind of programs, you need to know both languages, whether it be German or English. In the other programs, you can more or less you know, choose one of the, of the language that are offered. So the programs are in the different disciplines that we have. The first uh, programs like marketing management um, or up to uh, banking and finance are offered are in, in the field of business administration. Um, then we have um, two programs like general management, business innovation that are also offered in the business administration bracket. Then we have three programs which are offered in the uh, international affairs or economics bracket like economics quantitative economics and finance or international affairs and governance. Then we are offering three um, programs in the fields of discipline of law uh, and the international law is even offered in English. And then we are also offering as of this semester, so-called computer science master's program. And that's only offered in English. We are, beside a master's program, you can also choose to take a so-called uh, additional qualification, a so-called supplementary um, courses or discipline. And at the end, you'll, we'll be getting a so-called certificate. And we are offering here um, a certificate in business education. Um, that's if we want to teach um, on the high school level. Um, this is only offered in German. And then we are offering two programs, in, uh, which are so-called really certificate programs. One is in digital communication and journalism, and the other one is in uh, managing climate solutions. And you can take those courses besides your, or you can take those uh, additional qualifications besides your regular studies. And courses that you take may also be um, booked into your core curriculum that you are taking. So how does the degree course structure look in more detail? Um, we have um, almost all of our programs have 90 credits and I'll get to the 120 credits uh, program later on. As I pointed out before, we have so-called core studies and contextual studies. And on this chart, you see also the, the amount of credits that the core studies um, encompass, that's uh, 54 credits, and contextual studies are 18 credits. And together with the master's thesis of 18 credits, you'll get up to 90 credits. And uh, the course studies are divided in compulsory courses, um, core electives, and independent electives. So with the compulsory subjects, so those are courses involved, which each student in a specific program has to take. With core electives, you, have a choice, you can choose between a certain amount of courses, and with independent electives, you can either take more core elective courses, or you can also take courses from other programs, just as you please. Um, in the contextual studies, we differentiate between so-called skills and areas of communication. What that is in detail, I will be pointing out later on. Um, besides the master thesis, which is compulsory, there are also op optional um, work um, where you can create credits from, for, but those optional work or optional credits um, are not graded. So if you opt to get campus, so-called campus credits, uh, those are credits which are not graded and also the so-called practice credits. Uh, practice you, credits you will get for work, the practical work done outside of the university or university world. So here you can up, get up to um, eight, six credits uh, we've done any internship uh, during uh, your master's degree course structure. So that's the uh, overview for our programs with 90 credits. And um, here is the overview for our program with 120 credits. And that's our computer science master's program. Here, the structure is quite similar. Um, you have course studies, you have contextual studies, and you have a master's thesis 
which is um, as an exception is 30 credits large. So that's the big difference between uh, the 90 credits programs and the 120 credits programs. And you also see you can get uh, campus credits and also practice credits, but here the amount is a bit smaller than in the other programs. So that's an overview on our degree cross structure. And um, I will be also be giving you some um, introduction on our um, contextual studies. The contextual studies are divided into two pillars. One is areas of concentrations. Here you see um, so -called, um, the so-called multidisciplinary approach um, with certain topics, and you can choose a lot of courses uh, in those topics. For example, if you are interested in a topic like society, you may take um, up to 18 credits of courses which are offered in the topic society. And the same uh, is true or is uh, available for responsibility, media, cultures, history, creativity, and also technology, law, and law as well. Besides that, you can also take a certain amount of courses in the skills pillar. And here are practical uh, competences um, which are encouraged um, that you may take, like, for example, digital literacy. Um, rhetorical techniques, writing skills, time management, uh, methodology, principles of research. And again, you may also um, get some credits in practical uh, work done, so, done outside the university. They may also be accredited in the skills pillar. So that's an overview on our uh, curriculum. And um, we're also getting asked yeah, how uh, practical relevant are studies at this university. Well, for example, we have a lot of lectures which come from the practical word, world. They just teach uh, two or four lessons a week at our university. And of course, they bring in their practical knowledge. Then we also have a lot of case studies, um, which you have to do during your studies. Um, you can choose to take a master's thesis with a practical relevance so that you go and ask in an enterprise if you can do research and in a field that they are interested in. And of course, as I mentioned before, uh, you can also get credits for various internships at, the, yeah, at, um, at our, for our new curriculum. Then another question that we are also always being asked is, um, is the question, well, can you work while you're studying? And um, we have a lot of students who are take, take up some uh, practical work and do their, um, do their studies or work beside their studies. On, on the basis, our curriculum is um, designed for full-time study. So it's the idea that you take only courses and do that within three semesters, one and a half years. But part-time studies are possible, um, but you have to see that, uh, we have to manage that you're not coming into conflict with your exams or with your curriculum as a, as a whole. Um, we have a limitation of the maximum of credits, which are allowed, that's our eight, that are eight semesters. So when you start up your studies, you have an amount of eight credits in order to finish your, your studies here. And in, in, in the time being, in the, in the meantime, you can also take some practical experiences and work um, during that time. Um, as I mentioned before, you, it's the employer has to be flexible because you have to write exams, you have to take uh, write papers, and those papers and exams, of course, have priority over your practical experience. Um, we also have a career and, and services center, which has a job database, and you might find there some job opportunities which you can you know, choose upon if you want to work beside your studies. Um, another very important aspect, of course, is uh, how are the resources in terms of um, writing and studying. We have a library, which is a so-called specialized library on those fields which are offered by the University of St. Gallen. Um, it's also a workplace for students for either um, learning on for their exams or writing their theses. Um, we also offer a, a separate workplace for our master students if they want to write on their master thesis. We also have some, have some technical um, uh, help uh, with a so-called seed finder um, because um, the library is always, always in high demand 
And um, with the seed find, you can uh, see or find free spots if you want to study in the library. We also be often, we also, we are asked very often how expensive is uh, studying at St. Gallen. We have tuition fees uh, per semester um, at the master's level, um, which is 1,229 Swiss francs for Swiss students and for foreign students, it's a bit higher with 3,329 Swiss francs. You might, you might ask yourself, well, what's the difference? Why is it a bit more expensive for foreign students? And it has to do with financing. The University of St. Gallen gets financing um, for Swiss students, um, which is a bit higher than for foreign students. And in order to get the same amount of uh, money from, for each student, um, we have a bit uh, a higher uh, tuition fees for foreign students. That makes up the difference or explains the difference. Well, total cost um, uh, per year amount to 25,000 up to 35, up to 30,000 30, uh, Swiss francs. If you have uh, financial troubles during your studies, um, we um, have a so-called advice center, which helps students uh, with problems um, financially. So that's the URL where students can ask for financial help. Um, and I said before, as I pointed out before, a lot of students finance their studies um, with a practical work they do during their studies. So that's also a, a way to finance your degree course structure at the University of St. Gallen. Well, uh, we've talked a lot of uh, curriculum and finances, and uh, now I'm going to tell a bit about student life. Um, student life. Um, is actually done with your own engagement. So it's your personal engagement, um, which defines how much student life you are going to experience at our institution. We have a lot of uh, student initiatives um, and um, a lot of students also apply their learnings uh, into the practical world while organizing the student initiative. So that's also a way on, on how to get the practical experiences. And one of the primary student initiative is the student union. Um, around their mission um, that they have um, in, in, in terms of improving the quality of studies through representing student and life and providing services, they have a lot of initiatives started, like for example, Prisma, the assessment guide, script commission, the stage. So the student union is very active and we have, have a lot of students who are participating in the student union or their initiatives. And besides that, we have a lot of um, so-called private initiatives. Um, we have more than 130 student associations. Here you see just a small piece of those initiatives that are offered ranging from St. Gallen Symposium to Oikos to Bankers Club and so on. So that's only a small fraction of those issues, initiatives that are presented to you. Another way, of course, is so-called university sport. Here, here you see also a small, a very small list of all the offerings that university sport is offered. There are a lot of more and more sports um, offerings to you that you may choose from. And we also have a lot of students who are um, you know, taking those, those uni uni university sport offering um, very thankfully, and um, yeah, the lecture halls where university sports is teaching are usually very full. So how is life in St. Gallen? Um, first of all, if you are um, thinking about moving to St. Gallen, um, you also need to live in some place. Most, most students um, share um, an apartment with other students. And those range about 250 um, Swiss francs per room. Um, at the end of the semester, a lot of vacancies are available. Um, we have the so-called Facebook page sharing, it's caring. We have a lot of, of those apartments uh, or flats are offered. Eating in St. Gallen um, is um, available through the canteen and the coffee bar uh, right here at the university. And the ranges uh, from six uh, Swiss francs 20 up to about 20 Swiss francs. 
So that was the first part of my introduction. And I will now hand over to Carolyn, who will tell you about the Highscape Learning Center. All right, hello everyone. I'm Caroline and I'm a master's student myself. It's my pleasure today to introduce you to the new Husky Learning Center and give you a sneak peek at what awaits you. But first, let me start why the Husky needs a new institution for future forms of learning and teaching. The main purpose of the Learning Center is to help and guide you to become a more resilient personality and acquire skills that are needed in this increasingly complex world. So the Learning Center actually hands you a license to add parade. Further, the Learning Center facilitates a place for lifelong learning for our Haasge alumni. Last but not least, the Learning Center is a portal to society. We generally want to engage with society and take on challenges within it. But what is it like to experience a day at the Learning Center? For starters, there might be a big discussion about the latest digital trend, there are teams working on their group assignments, or the Master of Law and Economics is holding its class there. Further, you might be working side by side with some of our partners on a practical project, or even have a talk with the personality in residence at the coffee bar. But what is probably most important to you as a student is the question of what is in it for you. By taking the Learning Center as the new forum for encounters, for new forms of learning and for enrichment of your personality, you will be able to expand your network, gain experience, expand your horizons and leave a footprint by co-creating its content. Everything is wrapped up in the motivation that you are innovating teaching and you can actually find your own stage to get involved in a truly important course for yourself. That's it for now. And I hope to welcome you soon in person when the Learning Center is opening its doors in February 2022. So I hand over back to Pascal. Thank you very much. And uh, we will continue um, with our presentation. And uh, I will tell you, about, tell you about our international studies and the exchange opportunities that we are offering. We have a um, very international student uh, population. About 34% of our students uh, come from abroad and they come from about 87 countries. And a lot of those students are either full-time students or are exchange students coming to the University of St. Gallen. We also have a lot of uh, students who are going on an exchange. Um, we have about 200 partner universities and about 600 incoming students. Um, and the more than a thousand outgoing students. So that's a quite an international population. And um, well, where can you go? Um, we have a so-called uh, a partner university exchange. As I've mentioned before, we have two important partner universities. Here you see the uh, chart of the world um, in, in all the countries where we have partner associations, um, but it's also possible to go on an exchange as a so-called free mover. Free mover exchange are organized through your own, uh, through each student. And the only reason is um, the precondition pre uh, pre is that it has to be a, a university which is recognized. So if that's the case, then you can also organize your studies on your own. But uh, if you want to go on exchange, um, you have also to apply uh, for so-called partner exchange. A very special form, a so-called uh, double degree program. With double degree, you're making a special um, exchange. You are going to a, you are actually studying one year in some garden, and then you're going to your foreign uh, university, and you're studying there at least um, one semester or even two semester. And in the end, you you will be getting two degrees. So you, you will be getting a degree from the University of St. Gallen, and you also will be getting a degree from other university. And uh, 
In the end, of course, it makes sense if you, for example, if you want to work in the foreign country that you are doing your second uh, degree, um, then you have a full time, full, um, time degree from this institution. And as you can see, um, we have uh, programs um, in Europe, uh, also in North America and South America, and even in Asia. There are some double degree programs which are offered um, in one particular program. And there are also double degree programs which are offered to all the students which are on the master's level. A very special uh, WB program is the so called CEMS, Masters in Management program or WB program. Here you will be getting a, a degree from a special, uh, from the so called CEMS organization. So it's very particular, only um, a bunch of universities are involved in the CEMS MIM program. And in the end, it's a so-called joint degree where you get a degree from the Gallen and a degree from the SEMS organization. Um, the um, further on, um, after the, uh, I've given you some information on our degree programs, especially on our exchange programs. I've also been talking to you about our career services center and our high skill alumni. And when you're looking at our career services center, um, you are able to take on some of the um, offerings of uh, our career services center while you're still a student. And they're offering certain um, events, for example, for example, the high skill talents conference. Um, there's sometimes they have some industry specific uh, events that they're offering. They're also offering some career workshops to you. Uh, like, for example, designing your career, networking, um, how to present yourself for interviews, and, and things like that. They're also offering so called career counseling, that's a one to one counseling um, that are offered to you. And they also have a, a, an online platform where you can see the templates, letters of motivation, and interview questions. And they're also offering a so called job database. Where you can see um, for where you can look for um, job opportunities either in uh, either for an internship or even or for a full time uh, job when you're done with your studies. So and when you have graduated, um, you are also a high school alumni. A uh, speciality is that you are alum an alumni even when you are studying at the master's level. So you're already a full member. Uh, of the high school alumni, but uh, as long as you're a student, it's free of charge. So you don't have to pay any uh, alumni fees for that. And what are alumni, what are they offering? They are offering a vast network, uh, not only in St. Gallen, but all over the world. And they're also offering a lot of events. So whenever you are either here in St. Gallen or any place in the world, you may go up to the high school alumni and have uh, contact persons there. The ASCA alumni offers um, so it's called the so-called funding for student projects. Um, they also have a job uh, opportunity database where you can you know, ask members of the alumni. And they also um, offer support for the so-called mentoring program that we are offering at the master's level. And with the mentoring program, um, you have the, uh, the, the opportunity uh, to have a mentor and to, um, um, to ask or to um, guide um, your, that means the, the mentor helps you guide through your master's degree courses. And we have a lot of students uh, who have graduated from University, University of St. Gallen and are still in contact with the mentor. So that's the high school alumni and what the high school alumni is offering. And um, that concludes my remarks. And I will now hand you over to Helga Skipness who will tell you more about the admissions process and um, what you have to consider when you want to study or to take up your study at the University of St. Gallen. In that case, I'm wishing you the very best for this uh, introduction session. In the afternoon, you, as I mentioned before, you have the opportunity to uh, get more information on specific master's program and there to find more about the curriculum that they're offering. 
In that case, uh, good luck, and uh, I hope to see you soon at this university. Goodbye. So, uh, hello everyone. Thank you for the introduction. <laughs> um, in my presentation, I'm going uh, to give you more information about admissions, and I hope like, it will only be possible to give you an overview um, because it's uh, really dependent on the program you're interested in. So just keep this in mind. And uh, in my presentation, I'll first go into the... Uh, yeah, another slide. Is this one? Yeah. I start out with the requirements. You have to meet certain formal requirements. Then we go further to the next uh, level, to the selection process or to the admission process itself. And uh, finally, we go into the requirements or conditions which you have to meet once you are admitted to a certain program. And then at last, we will look at the application procedure, the admission windows, etc. So uh, let's start with the requirements which have to be met. This is the one behind. Right, thank you. So it's very important to note that our master programs are consecutive programs. So you need a bachelor's degree in a similar subject in order to apply. In addition, this bachelor's degree has to be recognized and it has to be a university institution bachelor's degree. If you hold a, univers a University of Applied Sciences bachelor's degree, you can apply, but only for certain programs. And you'll have to meet additional GPA requirements or additional requirements concerning credits, amount of credits for internships, etc. So uh, if you can always look this up really closely on our admissions website in the section recognition of degrees. With a university master's degree in a different field of study, you might be able to apply as well. Just make sure that it is a consecutive degree again. So bachelor's and master's degree have to be studied in the same uh, field of study. And if you're interested in master programs in law, uh, you have to hold a bachelor's degree in law from a Swiss university. So next section would be the admission process. Just for your understanding, at the University of St. Gallen, we uh, distinguish basically between two types of programs. There are the programs which are listed on this uh, slide where you can be admitted directly into the program if you have a Swiss, if you are a Swiss applicant. Swiss applicant means either you have a recognized degree from a Swiss university or University of Applied Sciences, or you have a Swiss nationality and have a recognized foreign, uh, a foreign degree or from a foreign university, a non-Swiss university. So then you can be directly admitted. All other applicants who have an international background, they are admitted through a selection process. And um, on the next slide, you see the criteria which we will be evaluated in this process for these types of programs. So this, uh, as you can see here, maybe I point this out, this GMAT and CHIRI in this uh, selection process is optional. Um, all the other information, please check it out on our website as well. Then on the other hand, there are these programs where you can, uh, where every application is going through a selection process. So this is the programs listed on this slide, like the strategy in international management, ma uh, master in banking and finance, uh, etc. Here, uh, every applicant, even the applicants with a business or with a bachelor's degree from a university of St. Gallen, have to go through the same selection process. The, every one of these programs has their own criteria. So please check it out on our website as well. 
uh, which criteria and the weighting of the criteria. Just this will certainly help you to draw up your application. Well, after you have been admitted to the program, you might uh, face like some additional work or conditions before you can eventually start your master's degree. There are, this is just an overview over the additional work there is, like subject related work, you have to either uh, take a program specific integration week. This is dependent on the master's program you have been admitted to and your academic background. So you might have to do this integration week or you have to do the master's preparatory level. This is a whole set of courses which you have passed before you can do your, start your master's. Or these are just courses from bachelor's and master's level, which you have to do beside your master curriculum. In addition to the subject related work, every student of the University of St. Gallen has to prove knowledge in two languages, two foreign languages before he graduates, he or she graduates. So um, you can do either language courses at the University of St. Gallen or have recognized language certificates credited. Um, another point is the length, knowledge of accountancy. So if you had already an accountancy course during your bachelor's degree, this is fine, it will be credited. However, if you hadn't had accountancy before, you'll have to do an accountancy test or exam at the University of St. Gallen before you graduate. Here, I want to go just quickly through the subject related work. Uh, this is an overview, which is certainly helpful. Uh, for the, on the first column, you see the master programs. And on the second column, you see which subject related work each master program knows and for which applicants these are relevant. So for example, the master in general management, if you have a university bachelor's degree in a similar subject, no matter if it's Swiss or foreign, you'll have to do the integration week or pass the integration week before you start your master's. If you hold a University of Applied Sciences bachelor's degree, however, or even a master's degree in a different field of study, you'll have to do the master's preparatory level before you start. And this is the same for the master's uh, like listed below with the relevant um, subject related work on the other column. So here, just to give you an idea, this is for uh, further information on the integration week business administration, which is relevant for those four master programs listed. You might ask why an integrative uh, week. Um, this is to make sure that all students of a master program start at the same level or a same basic level of knowledge in certain subject areas, which are for this integration week listed right here. This makes it much easier to start off with the master program later on. So it's very important that you know that you have to study up. There will be exams, there will be essays to be written in that week. And as soon as you get the admission letter, you'll get access to the study material. Um, there is two attempts, like for the business administration integration week, there is one in the spring. And the second attempt, if it didn't work out, is in the fall. So this has to be passed before you can start with your master's. Um, the same, like there's more information on integration with economics, but I'll skip this. It's important for those of you who are interested in these two programs. And then the master's preparatory level, for example, again, for the master in general management, this is all the core subjects out of the Bachelor of Business Administration have to be um, passed before you can register for the master's studies. You will be admitted to the master's degree with the condition that you have to do these courses beforehand. Uh, and only when you did those, you'll be able to register for, for master classes. So then how and when can you do the application? Um, the application windows are quite long. So for all those um, master degrees, which have an application 
for all the applicants, this has the selection process for all the applications. The final uh, date is the 30th of April. And for all other master programs, it's the 31st of March. Um, as this is quite long, most of the programs have application rounds. This uh, is only to give the applicants a better idea when they will receive the answer, if they are admitted or not. This makes planning much easier for you. Um, it's not relevant for the uh, chances to be admitted, however. Um, it is very important too, that you can only apply once online, once for fall 2022, for example, you can only uh, submit one online application. So make sure that you have uh, looked at the programs very thoroughly and chosen the one you really want to get into. Well, the online application, there is a new feature this year you have to have a switch edu id in order to end to to you know, register or in order to do the application so if you haven't got a switch edu id yet please um, create one and then you can you uh, create your user account or log in to user account for the online application enter all the data upload the documents you'll find a list of the documents which have to be uploaded on the website of each of the master programs, the commission's website of each of the master programs, which is very helpful here. And then as soon as you have entered all the data, uploaded all the documents, you can pay the, or you have to pay the enrollment fee electronically, so via Visa or MasterCard. And as soon as the payment went through successfully, your application is submitted. Well, I know this was quite fast and it's, it's quite general. So if you have a special or specific question, which is uh, because you have a, an international degree, which is a little bit different or whatever, you're very welcome to write us an email. Please add your current transcript and your uh, CV. This way, they'll make sure that we can give a really precise answer. And uh, we are also available by phone or like here in the, on the slide, you see our website, uh, our um, email address. All right. And uh, next, you'll have the chance to uh, join a virtual campus tour. This is uh, a very good, like it's unfortunate that you can't be here in person, which would be much better, of course, but I'm sure this like video will give you a really good insight too about how it looks at the campus and what kind of cool things you can do here. Um, so in a couple of seconds, this will start and I wish you all the best. And uh, yeah, I'm awaiting your emails, goodbye. Welcome to the campus of the University of St. Gallen. My name is Andreas Oberholzer and I'm a student of the Master Program Business Innovation. And today I'm going to give you a campus tour. We have various teaching formats, lectures, flipped classroom, exercises, seminars, and some of the smaller classes, they take place in a room like this one. But what I actually want to show you about this room is the nice view. Because whenever I feel stressed, I just have a look outside and I can instantly relax. Here we are in the Audimax. It's our biggest lecture room. And when lectures are full, we are over 600 students in here. After lectures during the day, we can often benefit from events in the evening, such as podium discussions with leading industry experts. to the library to borrow books and articles for your research, but more than that, it offers you a quiet place for studying and, if you urgently need one, a charging cable for your device. I always say that this is our social area. Why social area? We have the library, we have food, we have the Audimax up there, and that way everyone meets here and there's always a friend to chat to when you're here.
The Students' Union not only represents the interests of the students towards the university, but also shapes a landscape of over 120 student initiatives. The clubs range from dance classes to startup programs and sustainability forums. The Career Service Center is my partner in all my questions on what to do after my studies. I can ask for an individual career counseling, participate in one of their workshops, or get to know my future employer at their career fair. We're now in the co-working space. It's a casual place for studying and work. We have a nice coffee bar where we can come for a short break. We can move around all the furniture as we need. And last but not least, we are not forced to be completely quiet in here. This is our canteen where we eat lunch. But now, let's go on to the campus bar. Here we gather for a coffee or beer after lecture. It's always a great place to meet new people and it's completely student run. We have access to the Unisports program and what you do here totally depends on you. We have group fitness courses such as tennis, boot camp or yoga and if you prefer to work out on your own we even have a fully equipped gym. At the University of St. Khan, entrepreneurship is taught and put into practice. In many courses, we are asked to develop our own projects and to pitch in front of real clients. And because the best ideas usually don't come in a regular classroom, we have the makerspace. Here, we can work on our own business models and create prototypes. As most of my friends, I moved to St. Khan for my studies. We all live in shared flats in the city center of St. Khan and enjoy student life in this beautiful part of Switzerland. And by the way, the city center, is just 10 minutes by foot from the campus. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you very soon on the campus of the University of St. Gallen. Hi everyone from my side, my name is Daria and I'm currently a master's student in um, marketing management um, and my dear Selena, my dear friend Selena and I uh, are going to answer a few questions that you wrote in the chat and yeah, let's start off with the first one. Um, Selena, tell me, how easy is it to find an apartment here in Zagan? Well, it's not that uh, difficult because um, there are always many free rooms in St. Gallen um, in the whole city, so it's pretty easy. Um, you can just send a request to the Facebook group Sharing is Caring and there are all the listed apartments and rooms, so it's very easy. Um, I always found my rooms um, in there and just wrote an email or a message to the people who put it online and then um, I got invited to the flat. I could um, look at it and then I was invited to live there. But not only not only do you find rooms there, you can also find if you have a group of friends you want to move in with, you can also find like entire flats that are up for rent. Um, and you can either find random people you move in with in that flat or um, get the whole flat, right? Yes, exactly. It depends on but as well if, if you're if you're a lone fox you can uh, also get an apartment all by yourself. There's everything. Um, yes, exactly. Yes. So you don't have to worry if you want to move in with friends, that's a possibility. But um, if you don't know anyone um, there, you will always find the flat online. Also, the the group is actually very helpful for, I don't know if, you, if you're interested on in buying um, used books, if you don't want to buy them, Yes, if you don't need really? to new station, yeah. you can just go online there and get it's like a marketplace there. in a way. Yes, also like um, if you need um, a bed or something, they're also on sale on there, so you can get and you nearly can, everything on there. You can find really good bargains. That's it's really cool. So Daria, is it expensive to live in Saint Gallen? 
And is it really, um, as we heard in the presentation, 25 to 30,000 Swiss francs per year? I mean, that's, it, it really depends on your lifestyle. Like, I don't know, you can, I wouldn't be able to tell you how much I spend in a year right off the bat, but I think it's, it's you can go around ways. You have to just know that it's, in Switzerland, so you gotta get accustomed to Swiss prices, um, but it's not as expensive as Zurich, I wanna say. Um, but you will, it really depends on what you wanna spend your money on and how. And I mean, we're all students here, so we get along with what we have and you can find, you can easily find jobs if it's, if it's not, if you, if you don't have enough, funds on your own you can find a job around around campus or in the city even um but also you can apply for student loans it's not that complicated yes. and i mean you will get around that they're not gonna force all of they're not gonna force you to live on the streets that's what i'm yes, saying yes exactly it's also it depends um heavily where you live in St. Gallen, um, when you live in a center, um, in a newly built flat and you want to live alone, um, then you're going to pay more than when you live a little bit outside, which is very difficult in St. Gallen. So you, wherever you live in St. Gallen, you're near the city, so you don't have to worry about that. But if you're not in the city center exactly, you pay less and you still get a um, good flat. So. I mean, to put a price tag on the whole housing thing, I think you can get a flat room, a room in a flat from starting about 300 Swiss francs a month, ranging up and up to, I don't know that, the most expensive flat room, just a room that I've seen was about one five, 1,500, but that's really not all common. new. It's, it's, yeah. it's not common at all. Um, and flats, usually flats with four rooms, more or less about one seven if you're very, very centered. And I mean, St. Gallen is a very small city in a way. Um, and all of the flats or apartments or any complexes that you can live in are very easily, I think, maximum uh, 15 minutes at max to reach the university. Yeah, I guess so. so. Um, everything is near in St. Gallen, so. Yeah. Um, do you know where I can apply for scholarships? Um, I only knew and uh, know the um, the internet site, so it's funding.unisk.ch. Um, there you can find all information about the scholarships. Um, Doria, how many hours can you work during your studies? Do you know that? Well, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> Um, again, that very much depends on how you work, how you study. Myself, um, I don't mind studying on a Sunday or Saturday. I don't mind studying at like more in the evening as well. So for me, it works very well to work next to my studies. At the moment, um, I'm working about 60 per, a 60 percent job and doing mostly full-time study. It's 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 quite complicated, but everything is possible in Zenka, and let me tell you that. Um, and I think it it really depends on how how motivated you are and how much um, free time you want to leave, leave yourself. Um, but again, there are jobs and there are jobs. You can work a ten percent job. You can work a twenty percent job. That's fine. You can also work more than that. Um, you, as Pascal mentioned earlier, you can put your studies on hold in terms of do only part-time studying and do a semester or two more. So it's it's very open. I think in terms of hours, it's very hard to say. Yeah, I guess so. Um, I'm a full-time full -time student and I don't have a fixed job, but I just do some hourly work and to have a little bit more money and that's possible as well. And if you're a full-time student, you always find a job. Um, how limited are exchange programs and how are the students select? Oh, I'm actually curious about that. Um, well, that's um, <laughs> also hard to say because um, it very it 
it depends um, on where you want to go. Um, there are certain universities which are um, very limited because everyone wants to go there. So it's harder to get in, but you can generally name um, a university, which is very common because it changes every year. And sometimes it's um, one in America, sometimes it's one anywhere in Europe. So you can put a name on it, which one it is. So you just have to apply. Usually you um, have, you just put on like three priorities and you usually get one of these. So I think it's five, even five, even five. nowadays. Okay. I'm not sure. I'm about to go through that process. Um, one thing I know for sure, you have to, for several universities, you have to do the TOEFL exam. Um, and also depending on your score, you're going to score there. Uh, you, if you score over 100 points, you can um, apply for the exchange programs uh, for partner universities. Otherwise, um, if you choose to do a free mover, um, you can, it really depends on the university and their requirements of your TOEFL score. Um, and which is a thing that is not very great, but I mean, the university cannot do anything about that. That's not about the university, it's more about the TOEFL. It's only uh, valid for two years. So if you do an exchange or have done an exchange recently, um, you have to apply soon if, you're, if your TOEFL exam has been not, or just under two years. Yes. Otherwise you have to retake okay. it. Yeah. Um, do you know, Daria, if professors offer office hours? I'm not quite sure about the office hours, but I know that here at High School we have a very open community. Um, and if you want to talk to somebody, to your professor or their assistant, um, you can always shoot them an email. Or if you know where their office is, you can just go by. They always have an open door and an open ear. Um, and if they're really busy, they're going to tell you a time or a good time to come again. But I think it's it's very we meet we see each other at a very I very much on that on an eye level there. Um, and yes, I mean, that's my experience. Yes, say for me, I, I didn't even think about the office hours once uh, in the last few years, but I also have the experience that you just can um, shoot them an email and they will reply to you or an assistant will reply and you get just, uh, you can get there. And you usually also meet the professors uh, just outside of their offices and mm -hmm. in the buildings because uh, San Colin is not that big or the university is not that big so you usually just see them walking by and you can just uh, ask them walking by yeah. yeah and if you walk by and there's I don't know some some events happening usually there are events on campus and there's um, a very Swiss thing called apéro, which is small um, small pieces of food and, and beverages and usually you can find a few professors there and if you want to sneak in and talk to them that's also an option to do so and you get free food so but I do not recommend doing that all the time because once they know that you're not part of the event and you always go into the event it's not a good thing but uh, it's a way to lower it's your a, cost it, of living right yeah. absolutely we were talking about cost of living um yeah well do you go to the gym yes i actually do go to the gym sometimes um we do have a great gym um up up um in the on the hill um where the university is so it's already a workout to get up there <laughs> there are also um many classes like yoga classes pilates and several other things um i usually do spinning and so there's always a spinning bike free, usually. Um, there's also on um, Wednesday and Thursday is also another gym open we can use um, down at Athletic Centrum. Uh, it's very cool too, because usually there are um, less people there. So, and I live close by to that. So <laughs> I usually go there because I don't have to walk up the hill. Um, and I, li uh, there, I do like it there, but the, like the, the spinning bikes and other things are a little bit older at um, than at Hoyske Campus Gym. So um, I always uh, recommend going there if you don't look uh, for uh, very modern bikes and 
drive them in. So, I mean, you saw in the video just before how the campus is located on a hill and um, guilty as charged. Uh, there are a few hypocrites that go to the gym by the bus or with the car. As said, I've done that and I'm very, not very proud of it, but eventually I went to the gym. So there's a good in everything, right? Um, yes, um, we got a question as well, um, if there are additional fees for the sport programs. Um, for me, um, I usually just take the free classes, um, yoga and mostly everything is free, but there are some courses like if you take sailing, sailing lessons or sailing or 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 lessons, tennis, uh, private tennis lessons, or if you want to get a massage, sadly, that's not free, although we very much hope it would be. Um, but it's recently priced, right? Absolutely. Um, it's, it's not that expensive. So um, I usually don't pay for sport programs. I, I actually, I think I never paid for a sport no, program me. until now. So me neither. Um, well, it's Monday morning, but how's party life in Zonkan? <laughs> um, usually parties are on um, Wednesday, right? Oh, Wednesday. Um, and in Zonkan. Um, don't ask us why. <laughs> we don't know either. We just well, came I think, here. And I think was. it's because um, in Zurich it's on Thursday. So you can do Wednesday in Zonkan and on Thursday. Really? And, yeah. In I Zurich. did not know that. Yes, party, parties um, are student parties are on Thursday in Zurich. So I, I grew up um, near Zurich, so I know that. <laughs> <laughs> and I went to school there. So um, yeah, party life, we do have, I think, one main club in St. Colin. It's called Trishley. Um, I think most of the students go there. I actually never been to another club until now. So. That's a shame. That's a shame. <laughs> uh, there, is, there is a few, but there is, you can always find something to go to. Or um, there are a lot of bars as well in Zankan, um, where you can get lost um, in the depths of the night. Uh, but I, overall, I think it's it's a very lively city, yes. especially when the semester is full going. In summer or during, during the semester break even, um, it's a little bit less because most of the students go, go home to their families or um, visit friends elsewhere or go on holidays yes. um but yeah but i'm um, sure it's not far away so yeah i mean um, you will it's sometimes it's also very easily reached by public transportation mm -hmm. there are trains it, it's a very it's one of the 10 biggest cities in in some in, in, in switzerland. switzerland yeah so um i think you will be actually very surprised because some garden seems so small and it's yet yeah, it's not even um it's not even the, the smallest of the 10 so yeah yeah um but there are also uh, many home parties I oh yes uh, yes mm -hmm. i think this is the best uh, possible way to do party because you're not in a club um you don't have to put away like your jacket and anything you just when you have to go home you can just grab it and just leave the party That's so I, I usually go to home parties and there are many of them in some columns. Beware of the police, though. Yeah. Because Swiss, Swiss people are very keen to tell you at 10 p.m. that you're being too loud. Um, yeah. So should, uh, a life lesson from us to you. Um, if you live in an, in an apartment complex and you have uh, rather, uh, let's say, unpleasant neighbors, um, make sure to either bake them a cake a day in advance or just let them know that you're having a party and be like, hey, please be nice to us. We know we're gonna be loud, but they'll appreciate it very much. Or just don't be the host and only go to parties, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, we got another question about the library, big um, subject change. Uh, the library actually does offer, the, the question was, um, to elaborate, the library offers full, full spectrum of the books online as well. If you study at the University of Sengan, you get a, um, a link or a VPN um, link that you can use from anywhere around the world. 
And with that, when entering that VPN, you can um, access the full library or the full online library of the university. Um, and that has even more books, I think, than the university itself. So it's we have an online um, library tool or link mm -hmm. where you can first of all check whether the book you desire to read is available at the library um, or when it's coming back um, or whether you can find an online version and just read it online. So it's very handy and um, yeah, you don't pay anything for it. Yes, exactly. So I think there are a few books which aren't published online, but mm -hmm. I actually never yeah. have that many problems with that. So uh, usually you, you have everything online. So And if you want, if, if there is a book that you desperately need and it's only available, for example, at the University of Zurich, there is a, some, some kind of service that I'm not familiar with, but I know of it. Um, that they would get the book from Zurich to you to hear it so good. Yeah, you can deliver it to the um, to the university um, library and you just can get get it there and also I think bring it back to the university here. So you don't even have to um, care about sending it back to the library it came from. Mm -hmm. So that's also a possibility. Exactly. While Sangaran might seem to be on the edge of of Switzerland or the world in some cases, it's actually, it's it's very well um, connected with all of Switzerland. Yeah. So. Yeah, it, it's big, um, like the train station is very big. It's many, many trains um, leave and come here. So you have direct connection to Munich, which you can reach in, in two and a half or three hours by train. Mm -hmm. Zurich, um, airport, is Zurich also airport is, 40 or 50 minutes away mm -hmm. with a direct yeah. um, train. You can you can even reach um, Geneva, which is the opposite corner of the country in about four hours. Also um, to the mountains. Trains yes. to the mountains are um, also very good. So if you want to spend the, the, the weekend um, skiing or snowboarding in the mountains, that's a possibility as well. So um, it's not far away. And there are a few destinations which are only like an hour away. So. That's great too. And they have great student prices. Yes, well. exactly. So that's just in parentheses. Um, we've got another question about the bidding, the bidding system. Um, so the bidding system is actually very interesting because it always leads to confusion. It's the bidding system is the is a tool where you can choose the courses or bid like in a market on on the courses you you want to take and it's on a we can't really say if it's on a first come first serve but also who bids more and who bids less um type of way that they assign the courses so i mean the best way to figure out what how much you should bid on a course is to ask your fellow students if they think that course is popular or not um mm -hmm. And there is no guarantee, but I think there is hardly any um, student that has gone through their whole studies here and has been dissatisfied with the courses at all times. So if you really want a course, you will get it in the end. Maybe not this semester, but you will get it in the next one or the one after. It also helps you. Sometimes you you never think that a course could um. You, you could like that course and then you go there and then it's actually very interesting. So my experience is that sometimes you, you should take something which is like out of your comfort zone. Absolutely. And it, it really helps you in the end. And it's usually it's pretty interesting. And if not, you can just drop the course. So <laughs> it's also a possibility, but um, not recommended it, um, obviously. But um, I, I recommend um, to, to choose a course which you don't usually would take. So... It's, it's actually very interesting. And of course you have the requirement or the, the mandatory courses that you have to do eventually um, during your studies here and you can choose whether you wanna do them in the first semester or the third. There are quite a few recommendations as in um, like to for the whole curriculum to make sense. Um, mm -hmm. So for example, I'm taking a few classes this semester that I 
potentially could have taken in a year, so in my third semester, but just chronologically, it doesn't make sense. Um, but again, if you, if you, for example, can't make a course because you're working on that day, um, you can adapt, you can check with, with the professor or the assistant, whether they can do it online, especially now after Corona, a few classes are still offered um, mm -hmm. hybridly. So yeah, especially the big classes, mm -hmm. right? The small ones, not that much, but the, the big ones and the, yeah, you usually can do them online, but you have to ask the professor as he, he or she decides um, if it's online or hybrid or only in person. So just check that. I have another question for you. Do you like it here? I love it here. Um, I actually came for to St. Gallen for another. Um, I wanted to do law and eco, and I actually stayed here for law, um, even though um, usually people from Zurich who want to study law they go to, to uni University of Zurich, and I just came here and I just like the vibe here and the the city as well. Um, as I was for a long time in Zurich and. Um, I just came here and I felt comfortable. And also the nature is near, um, that's very cool as well. And it's still not that far away from home as other cities in Switzerland. So I really like St. Gallen and also the spirit of the students, everyone helps each other, um, my experience. And um, when I was in my first year here, everyone who studied here was like, oh yeah, I can help you and I will help you, just write me an email. And, I have the experience that it's always like this and also in other courses if if you can't make the lesson and you just ask anyone um, even if you never spoke to them they will send you their notes so i actually did have this great experience here with with this and you why did you well i i came here and i stayed here i did my um, bachelor's degree here as well um and i'm pursuing my master's in marketing i think um or the reason I don't, I don't even remember why I chose St. Gallen over anything else. It's, it was mostly because I wanted to do something in um, business administration. And for me, the only thing in Switzerland um, was St. Gallen. I didn't even consider the other options. Um, but I stayed here also for the community, but mostly for any everything the university has given me in terms of experience that I gained over extracurricular work. Um, I think, as Basco mentioned earlier, there are a lot of student organizations, student clubs, initiatives you can join and you can feel very welcome. For example, I felt like I would have a hard time fitting in as my interests um, differ from interests that you would expect of a business administration students but I was I'm, I'm so glad I was wrong um, I found a few um, organizations where the whole thing was to pursue whatever I was interested in and um, starting as a member finishing um, as an alumni after being a board member um, or a president or whatever you can have so many opportunities and um, it does look good on your cv not gonna lie but of course you're not doing that for the cv you're doing it for the experience and i think um working or being in a in a club also sets it gives you more opportunity to find to network with people, to network with partners, to find good internships, to just learn the stuff you're hearing in a course by doing it in the afternoon. And I think that the Learning Center, to mention that uh, for last time, is gonna be a hub where the thing I, I'm just describing right now is gonna be supported by the whole environment as well. So there, all of these points are coming together um, or crossing to go on further. So I'm sad that I won't be here for that much longer to experience um, the Learning Center in its full capacity, but I'm excited for you guys if you choose to come here that you will be and free because <laughs> you're you. staying for a while. <laughs> yes, I, I will. Um, also, what I forgot to mention is that because the universe isn't that big, you always make friends very fast. Oh, yeah. So I've never, 
I, I think I once had a course where I didn't know anyone because everyone knows everyone here. Mm -hmm. um, it's my experience. Um, you can just ask, oh, um, you come from there and there. Oh, you know. You know? No, 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 yeah, yeah, exactly. Always. Absolutely. And I, it's the first time after three years here, I have a course where I didn't know anyone. But like in the first five minutes, I already met, made friends um, and had their uh, phone number and was in a group chat for this course. So you never have to worry about uh, not making friends in St. Gaul because it's not possible. It's really not possible to don't make any friends, right? Yeah. Sometimes even too many friends and you don't know where to go on a Wednesday night. You have, as Sidney mentioned yeah. before, you have one party, you have another one, and you're like, ah, I don't know what to do. Yeah. Anyway, um, that's been all of the questions. We, we could ask ourselves questions for the rest of the day, but I think um, you would like to learn more about your master program of interest. Um, and you can do so um, if... I press here is something gonna happen. Yes, that's cool. Um, so if you go on this link or you enter this link um, online, uh, you can find a direct link to the next Zoom presentation about the master's degrees. Um, and yes, if you have any further questions or something that has been unclear, um, don't hesitate to email um, the info day and yeah. Yeah. Have a great one. Yeah. And hopefully to stay tuned. So bye. Bye.